So, John, in the passage, we know that Jesus is referring to an ancient image, the shepherd, the people of God, the sheep. Uh, but there is a new wrinkle to the way he talks about this. And it's not about the good shepherds or under shepherds of the past or bad shepherds, but he introduces thieves and robbers. He introduces people that can come in, other voices, whatever it is, and interrupt this complex process that we've been talking about between the pasture and being able to digest the food properly and rechew it in the sheepfold under his care. Thieves and robbers. Jesus is explicit. You pointed out he is referring almost directly to people who are listening to him based on what's preceded in John's gospel. Can you open up, up the idea a little bit more of this thieves and robbers and maybe point us to some practical ways we might be able to make the connections of things to look out for that would interrupt this hmm. process of our life in the Word with the Lord? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, I'm taking uh, chapter 9, verse 40 and 41 with chapter 10. This is, uh, you claim to be... You claim to have see. sight. You're, you're telling us God's will. The Pharisees. But you, yeah, but right. you're not, uh, you're not really uh, uh, seeing and you're guilty. And, and so, so when he mentions in chapter 10 that thieves and robbers are there, I, I'm assuming, uh, well, I'm seeing in the text that they are the thieves and robbers of the day. Wow. So, so the organized religion, which would, which would interfere mm. with the process of mm. anyone hearing Jesus' words and, and ruminating on them or digesting them. So I, I think in, in our time, I guess I see... Uh, uh, even uh, even before it lost its mind, evangelicalism of our day. Um, An and I organized say, religion. Well, religious specifically structure. historical evangelicalism. Yeah. Um, before even before it lost its mind mm-hmm. in today's uh, 20, uh, 2016 to twenty twenty uh, political climate, but but the idea that uh, evangelicalism would constantly tell us what things meant. Uh, would would constantly be there to say, um, you know, for example, in Psalm seventy one six, where where it talks about uh, knowing uh, knowing a person from their mother's womb, and mm. um, I mean, I I can read that scripture to this day, and and my first thought is, oh, there's a there's an uh, an abortion passage, right. there's a right. there's something against that, right. uh, or it's even in Psalm fifty one, uh, the famous Psalm fifty one. Um, you know, caring for us from our mother's womb. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when when the national interests um, barge in on what's supposed to be personally ours, mm. it really is like a thief and a robber. Mm. I mean, th- those two passages are not about abortion. They're about care. They're about how much God cares for us. Mm. He cares for us even when, when we're in that critical place of forming in the womb and and uh, and at birth and and how much care and love uh, the Lord the Lord has for us. So so I th- I think that organized religion, uh, regardless of you know I mean in Jesus' day the Pharisees were the organized religion sure. of the old covenant. I mean they were the authorized They're religion. The fundamentalists of their time in some ways, or at least their very strict adherence to right. They yeah. imagine themselves as not being uh, sloppy or casual with yeah. things. Yeah. So when they take something that's meant for you personally, mm. your food, mm. and, and, they, and they take it, they snatch it away, as a parable of the sower I'm thinking of, they snatch it away before, before you ruminate on it, before you are able to say, thank you, Lord, for that personal word to me. Mm. I know it means a lot to many people, but it means something to me very specifically mm. that, that those are the... Those are the interests, the national and the international and the global uh, meanings of things sometimes should be secondary. And the primary meaning uh, that when the Lord gives us a scripture should be for our care and and, uh, and, and the process of our own personal growth. That he's big enough, God, to have food for for us to graze in and to to be a pastor. So I, I think that um, you know, we really need to uh, be careful we don't get on agendas, uh, national or otherwise. Uh, and, and we can have those agendas, 
and they certainly uh, um, need to be adherent to the text of Scripture. Mm -hmm. But when God is personally caring for us, that can't block out His care for us. That mm -hmm. can't get in the way of that. And it's no substitute. It's no substitute. It's not going to help us. Right. It, it's it's going to make us uh, whatever the feeling and mood it's supposed to. It's going to make us that way. What's so so yeah. When I think thieves and robbers, you know, like your mind, I think drifts to not that drifts to godless voices, secular, right? Like that. You know, you would think of the enemies of the gospel, and you know, and yet as you're pointing out in the context even of the passage, he's referring to. The, the religious leaders and the organized religion that purports to have sorted all this out, almost like we've already chewed it for you, um, here's what it means, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And you're not even saying that there aren't connections to certain meanings, you're saying they're short-circuiting this process and the individual is not able to have that actual digestion.